Okay? Now what I can do while I'm doing this, let's have a think about that, is click on auto proof and that will allow me to look at the picture. You see it's really working very hard to do this now because it's quite a difficult effect for it. If I click on auto proof, that'll allow me to see what's happening on the real picture itself. Again, it's going to be thinking about it. There's a lot of detail there that it's having to work out. Now, the important thing here is this interior color that I've put in here. If I click on there, I can choose any color I want to be the interior of that wood. So I've chosen a kind of woody color, if you like, to be the back of the carving that we're actually making. So let's just say we're happy with that. Now, what I want to do is turn the blur down a bit because it's a bit too blurry. I want the edge to be a bit harder than that. Big think about that as well. Bring it down a little bit more, perhaps. It's still just a little bit too blurry given um, the size of the typeface and the amount of space we've got left in it. There we go. Now we'll say OK. Now let's take the selection off, and we can, you can see now the effect that we've actually made. Look at that. It really does look like we've carved a lump out of that. OK, now what I want to do is I'm going to cut a hole out of this wood background. So I click on the wood layer. Then I use my selection tool here, or the marquee tool as it's called in some programs, cut out a big slab, and then just do delete. And that's going to get rid of that square on my layer. Now while I'm there, what I want to do is add the same shadow effect that I just created on the text. So let's go to image, effects, we're going to do cutout, as we did last time. But this time I'm going to increase the depth of the cutout enormously. I want it to look like a sort of a letterbox effect. So let's create it, bang it right the way up to about 60. Let's bring the auto proof in so we can see what we've got. And I'm also going to bring the blur up as well, just so it looks like the edges are a little bit softer. And you can see it just changing that around there. Perfect. Now then, we're nearly there. I'm going to say OK, because what I want to do now is take out the texture that we've got here and slip that in underneath the gap. So I go selection none. And I'm going to cut a section of this out, like that, do control C. And then what I'm going to do is go back onto this one and paste it in as a new layer. So let's click onto this picture. And then I'm going to do edit, paste as new layer. There it is. Now at the moment it's sitting there. It's not as big as that hole. So what I can do is deform it. And that's using this one over here, using the deform tool. I can stretch it out that way and that way as well and pull it down. Of course, we've got this big lump of cloth here. We have to apply the deformation before we do anything else. But the most important thing is the order of the layers. Because right now we've got the text, then we've got our lump of cloth, and then we've got our wood background. Now, of course, what I want to do is to have the cloth behind the wood background. So all I need to do is grab hold of the wood background and lift it up above the cloth. And then you can see the kind of effect that we've created. It really does look very spectacular indeed. You can see the real wood texture there, and you've got the color of this different text showing through underneath. Now, hessian and uh, wood simply aren't the only textures that you can scan in. Bricks make great textures. Uh, spaghetti, I mean, that's a fantastic. There's a whole host of things, uh, pebbles, all sorts of stuff. But if you are going to do a lot of rough stuff like that, what I suggest you do is put a sheet of uh, clear plastic. You can buy plastic that you put in your printers, clear plastic. Put that on the lens or the glass of the scanner before you start putting all these substances down, because all you're going to do is scratch the glass on your scanner, and then when you come to do other stuff, you really will be quite irritated. So make sure you cover it with some clear plastic, and then you can scan in any text you like and end up with effects like that. All we did was we scan in a piece of wood, a piece of hessian, a couple of text effects, and we've created something that looks very 3D indeed. <laughs>《Dear Richard, I've just been playing something called Music 2000 on a friend's PlayStation, and I understand it can also run on the PC. Perhaps you could give me a class on the basics. Yours desperately, Jim.'"
Well, Jim, we've uh, we've tracked down this piece of software for you, and we have loaded it up on our PC, and we've been playing with it for days, and we've lost so much time playing with this piece of software. It is remarkably good fun, so you better prepare to write off a week or so when you load it onto your PC. Now, basically, the way it works is this. You've got a bunch of what we call samples, which are little snippets uh, of different musical styles. You've got drum beats, you've got guitar riffs, you've got lots of techno bleeps and blops and blaps and blights and all the rest of it, and you string them all together to make a song. Uh, or a musical expression, I dare I use the word song. Uh, now, if you look at the screen, what we've done is we've uh, thrown together a potpourri of sounds on the screen, um, and we've come up with this. Let me just play it for you. Now, what happens is you can see the time bar moving along the left here. Now, that's the string section coming in there. And then you can see the beats start picking up. Now, each of these are sound samples. That's a 70s intro kick. Wait for it to come in, and... There we go. Now we've got down here, we've got the Brazil drums. And then we have the vocals down here. You can see as you leave your cursor over each one. So what we've done is we've created this little tune. Now this uh, is very easy to do. You just grab hold of the different bits of sound and paste them onto the uh, screen. Let me grab a few more sounds and show you how this works. So I'll just come out of this. Right mouse click anywhere on here, that'll stop it. Then take it up to the beginning of the song again. And what we can do is take a look just down here, and we can see there's the string section down here that we heard earlier on. That was that big bank of strings fade in that we heard. Now, what I'd like to do is actually put something a bit more techno-y sounding in there. So what I'm going to do is build up the sound a bit more at the beginning. So what I need to do is pull up what we call the sound library. Now, to do that, I right mouse click anywhere on the screen, bring up the riff library, and then what we're going to do is go over to some of these trance sounds that we found at the end here. Actually, that dummy doo-doo bass was quite good. Let me right mouse click on, you can hear what it sounds like. Oh yeah, very hard beef there, isn't it? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna choose that one by clicking on it, and then I'm gonna lay it into some of these tracks here. So it's a, quite a long line, that one. So let's put it in three times. Now let's put in something else as well. Let me right mouse click. Go back to the riff library. The riff library is where all of the, the main riffs are kept, all of the ones that are stored in the system. The riff palette are the ones that you've used in that song. So once you've got a few, um, once you've got a few sounds set up and you've used them a few times, it's just like a style palette uh, or indeed the, the library that you have in something like Flash. Let's go back up to the big riff library though. Try and find some bigger sounds. That's quite fun, isn't that? Quite a nice little sound. Or this one. That's not quite so chunky enough. I want something really banging. I want something to bang the whole song off. No. no. Let's go back to a bit of drum and bass, you see. That's what we want to find. You can see that as you scroll through, you get the different categories of music at the top. So that's in rock, that's in house. Let's find a bit of drum and bass. That's better. Drum and bass sound effects, drum and bass percussion, melody, drum loops. There we go. Let's try one of these. How about a large one too? Uh, that pants that one. A new phase. This all sounds a bit military, doesn't it? I guess that's drum and bass for you. Let's try the bass cadet. Oh, that was quite. Oh yeah, I like that one. Or this one. Oh yes, that's the sound for me. Here we go. Let's put that one in. So let's choose the brookie. Yes. Everyone in the gallery is getting very tired of me playing with all the sounds. Just put something in, Richard, for goodness sake. Right, okay, now let's go back to the beginning of the song and sound what, sound what, uh, hear what it listens to now. Of course, it's going to be much better now that I've you know, added all these extra sound effects in. You can turn other tracks off by clicking down here, and you can turn them on off so you can just listen to the bits that you've been doing yourself. See, this is the bits we've added in now. Sounding great. What we're going to do now is fiddle around with some of the sounds and show you how to tweak the volume and, more importantly, turn it into a WAV file that you can play on other people's computers. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go back to the beginning and turn off some of these tracks that we've got here. Very easy to do. If I just click on the track listings down on the left-hand side here, you can see I'm actually turning off all of these different tracks. So all of those are turned off now. Let's play that, see what that sounds like. 
So now we're missing, we're not hearing any of that other stuff that, we've, uh, that I've just turned off. We're not gonna hear any of this, we're just hearing the strings now. And also, more importantly, we're gonna hear the stuff that I just put in. <laughs> Which is obviously, you know, the best part of the song, what we've heard so far. Oh yeah, very retro, isn't it? Okay, now then, that's enough of that. What we want to do now is start playing around with the volume of different riffs. So let me turn these ones back on again. There we go, let's turn number one on. Number two was turned off already, so now all of those have turned back on. And what I want to do is change around with one of these riffs. Let's come down to the strings down at the bottom here. I, think I might have gone past them, they're up a bit. You can navigate just by moving, there we go. So there's the strings fade in. Now then, what I'm going to do is right mouse click and come down to riff volume, which is, there it is, change riff volume, that one there. Then you want to select the riff you want to change. And what happens is that this one here starts in very quietly and it builds up to volume 56. So perhaps we might want it to start a bit louder. So start about 48 and then finish louder as well. So let's go OK. That one there, it's actually the close down, it's not actually the OK button, it's slightly confusing. And then let's try that. So back to the beginning again, let's play, press play. So now you see those strings are automatically a bit louder than they were when we started, and they're gonna start raising as we come into the soft building, into this big IB for anthem where we can enlarge it up. It's all a bit iron apper, isn't it? Okay, well that's how you can change the riff volume. Let's have a look at the, uh, the riff itself. So let me escape out of here. This is very uh, techy indeed, but it's worth having a look at. Right mouse click, and then you can have a look at the riff editor. And this is very techno. What you do is you click on here, and what this then allows you to do is change different elements, different, you see the notes coming in here, so you can move different notes down. You can change the riff itself. You can actually write the riff or rewrite the riff. Now this is very, very tricky. You have to uh, sort of get used to how the different notes works. But if you're musically minded, if you know how the whole music thing works, then you probably won't have much trouble with that at all. I'm gonna close that one out, because believe you me, that's just a lump of squares and lines to me. But if you are musical, you'll probably be able to work it out. Okay, well that's that one. Let's have a look at the other right mouse functions that we can do while we're on our songs. So let me right mouse click here. What we can do is uh, select areas so we can get rid of different areas. Uh, and we can also go to the world view, and this gives us a big overview of what our song is going to look like once we've laid all the tracks down. So what you can do is select huge chunks and move them about. Now it looks so, if I move over to the left here, it looks as if we've got a few lines left out here. So what I could do if I wanted to was highlight these areas here, like that, right mouse click, copy the area, and then bring it here. So I want it to actually work differently and lay over that other stuff. So now I could also lay it down again if I wanted to, like that. So we're getting a whole different range of those songs coming in. And now if I go back and play it, you can see what a dog's dinner I've made of it. And it's quite useful looking at it this way because you can see when different sounds come in. The playhead moves across, and then you can see the different layering effects that you're making with the different tracks. And this is when all of this stuff kicks in, all of our drum beats, etc. Now, it can go down to 99 tracks. Uh, now, if you're using a MIDI system, uh, what you want to do is try and pare some of those MIDI tracks down if you keep building up lots and lots of songs. You go up to 99, then reduce some of those down to two or three tracks, and then you can start layering even more songs into it. But what we're going to do now is we're going to fiddle, finish fiddling around with this, and then we're going to turn it into a WAV file that we can play on our MP3 player. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is come back out of our world view. So we'll cancel that, right mouse click, and you cancel the world view. That'll take you back into the, uh, the view that we were looking at earlier on. Now it's worth having a look at the riff palette while we're here because it, the riff library is enormous. You saw how many different types of music there were when we were doing that. Uh, trying to find the right ones that you want can take a long time. Now the great thing about the riff palette is, if I right mouse click and pull up the riff palette, which is there, these are all the ones that we've used in this song. Okay, now that may look a lot, 
But when you consider how many rifts there are in the entire software, then it's going to really cut down the amount of time once you start layering these different sounds up. But anyway, enough of that. What I want to do now is save this into a WAV file. So let's close down the rift palette. And we're going to go up to load and save, which is up the top. So I'll click on that. And what we're going to do is turn it into a WAV file. And the button that enables us to do that is this one, save as WAV file. So I'll click on that. And it says a file with this name already exists. Do you want to overwrite it? Yes, I do, because I think I've improved the song immeasurably in the last 15 minutes. Yeah, right. Say OK. And save it as a WAV file. Now, it is quite a big process reducing this down into a WAV file. Don't forget, though, that WAV files are the largest volume sound file that you'll be using on your PC. What you'll want to do is actually reduce it down further to that into an MP3. And there are other bits of software that will do that for you. But for the time being, we're going to keep it as a WAV file. And let's finish that now. You also need to take note of exactly where it is, because uh, this piece of software, coming as it does uh, from a different stable of software manufacturers, hasn't quite got the whole sort of Windows deal worked out in its head yet. So you need to keep an eye on where it's going to end up. And in our case, if I remember rightly, it's ended up in a uh, Music 2000 WAV file folder. So there we go, there we are, Music 2000 file. Right, let's close this down. Let's come completely out of this piece of software, quick to the desktop. And now we're going to open up our MP3 player. Now what I'm actually going to do is just simply open up the WAV file, because that'll kick off the MP3 player anyway. So we'll go into Windows Explorer. And the music was all stored under the, co the Codemaster folder, which is where all of these files were dumped. And the one we saved was the music 2000 file. So it's the WAV file now. You can see it's 22 megabytes in size. So you really do want to get a piece of software that's going to squish that down to an MP3 for you. But let's double click on it. There it's playing. Let's hope we can get some volume on it. Now then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick off the Geiss visualization, which comes with Winamp. It's a download you can get off the Winamp website. It's just a little bit of fun. But what I'm going to do, if I double click on the visualize it, visualization screen now, this music, these visuals are now going to be created in time with the music. So you can see it moving around. And this is the stuff that we've just made. This uh, download, by the way, it's called Geiss, G-E-I-S-S. -S. And if you go to the Winamp website, you can download it. It plugs straight into Winamp. It's only 151 kilobytes. And it creates these absolutely fantastic shapes. Uh, you configure it for whichever music that you want to listen to. It's got uh, a range of different um, settings that you can change. In fact, while we're here, we might as well have a look at it. I'm going escape out of that one. The music still plays. Uh, but of course, it needs to go back to the desktop. You can figure, incidentally, you can figure your uh, plugins just on this little button on the left hand side here. So let's come down to visualization options. That's the next one up. There we go, if I can find it. Nope, can't find a button. Ah, there we are. Configure the plugin. There we are, and this is the one that we've got. I'm going to change it to 800 by 600. Just give it one more go. Let's play our song right back to the beginning. Get the Winamp off again. Oh, now that's very sexy, isn't it? Really is a fantastic special effect. So what we've done is we've made some great music. We've downloaded something off the Winamp website earlier on, which fits into our Winamp player. And uh, yeah, we're just going to sit here and stare at the screen for several hours. It's going to be great fun. There are so many of you out there who want to learn how to use front page. We feel we can only but respond to your request for help by doing a lesson on starting a web page from scratch using front page. It comes free with uh, the Office suite of products, so an awful lot of you have got the software. So what we're going to do is show you how to start from the ground up and make a very, very simple website. Once you've got these basics, by the way, then it's quite easy to start putting in all the more uh, elaborate stuff that we'll be showing later in the year.